Tell somebody, say you are him for something new. And the hand of the Lord will rest on your part. Amen. Today, I'll be talking on a topic which I titled, Unlocking the Mystery of the Holy Communion. Unlocking the mystery of the what? Holy Communion. Behind everything, there is a secret and a code. Behind everything, there is a way the Lord wants you to be. But a lot of people come to the table, otherwise known as the Lord's Supper, just come for coming sake. They didn't know what that communion can do. Some people just have the understanding of they were served communion, but they don't even know what can this do. It has turned to religious things, or let me say, just any out thing, and people take it so lightly, and for this reason, they are not being able to receive the benefit of communion. So the Lord said this year, I must speak to everyone about the unlocking of this. So to unlock is to undo the lock. Holy communion turned to the sacred things when Jesus himself has given us opportunity on what we should do about it. Jesus said, that when you do this, you remember me, you remember my death, you remember me until I come. And he said, as I'm going, I'm not going to eat with you anymore. We are going to eat when we get there. It means that there is an heaven for everyone. And I pray for you, I pray for myself, that the Lord will take us there. I want you to understand that Holy Communion could be former or informal. I remember the first one that the Lord asked me that we should do was an informal communion. Many years ago in Ogba, Lagos State, Nigeria, during our healing hour, we started ministry with healing hour. So healing hour is our covenant program. Started with counseling meeting people, and expand to church. So the Lord said to me in one of the meetings that you are going to serve communion. <laughs> I did not know how it's done. And here it is. The Lord said, told me specifically, go and get a gege bread. Pray on it. And everybody that come or just come and cut little. Eat it. And just go to sit. Three miracles happened that day. Number one, there was healing of an HIV patient. Number two, healing of a kidney problem. Number three, the God method fiber that was like six point something kg. So, when you hear God speaking to you in his own way, he understands that this is what I am about to do. A better hey, amen. Can you shout it very louder? Luke chapter 22, verse 19. I'm going to read 19 and 20. says, And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it unto them, saying, This is my body, which is giving you. This do this in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying. This cup is a new testament in my body. Which is shared for you. Don't forget to say after supper. When they have eaten the bread. He brought out the wine and he said. You must eat. But he said. One unique thing about this is. That this is my body. He didn't say this is the bread you know. 
It either they make the bread an unliving bread, or the wine was bought or was gathered somewhere. But he said, this is not the bread you know, and this is not the wine that you used to know. He said, it has now turned to my flesh and to my body that whosoever that take this, you have life in you. In other words, when we talk more about this word, we are talking about when we serve the communion unto God, we are receiving life afresh. So, when we hear the word to unlock, it's to reveal deep things behind certain things. Number three, to make something valuable and appear better than the way it is in order to increase the value. So many people may not understand what Holy Communion stands for. We take it, we just, you know, we just take it and we see that I've taken it, what else? I want to send everyone home after today. That is a sacred thing that you can also serve with your family members. When God was to allow the Israelites to get out of bondage, he said, go and kill ram. And when you kill ram, make sure that it's not blemished, it's pure white. Kill it. Eat and make the blood at the entrance of your house. Let the blood be there. So the, the, as the theology and they say, that is the type of Jesus. There is anti-type and there is type in theology. Something that has happened that looks like something that is happening. So we look at the type and we look at the anti-type from theology school. So we got to know that by the time they kill, they serve the communion and they use the blood of that at the entrance of the house when the killer angel came, it could not touch them. Because of what? That has happened before Jesus. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word was what? What, what? Word with God. And the word was what? With God. And it was God. So it says everything that were created was created by the word. Then if we have to look at the word, Jesus is called the word of God. So everything that happened, Jesus was telling people. He was the one who spoke in the book of Revelation about the seven churches and said to each churches, I know your work. I know what you have done. I can see you. You don't see me around you, but I see you in heaven. And I know you have done certain things that I love, but you have done the abominable things. Because of this, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You will not be my church again. So Jesus is always present to know. So he said, whenever you eat this, you have eaten my flesh. And some disciples heard this and they said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Because of what? They couldn't understand what this was stand for. And for this reason, they looked at it and said, no, we cannot eat his flesh. And more than 70 disciples, you know, you've gathered a lot of people. And like 70 people disappear one day because they did not understand the word. How can we, how can we eat his flesh? How can we drink his blood? We know. And he asked the remaining 12 and he asked them, are you going? And they said, we have nowhere to go. But Judas didn't know that a time is coming that is going to be victim of servants. Servants who? I pray for everyone today by God in the name of Jesus that God Almighty will make all things work for us. A better amen. amen. Shout a bigger, bigger, bigger amen. amen. So the word mystery is something not understood or beyond understanding. That is the word mystery. Something that is beyond understanding. So mystery is a religious truth that one can know only by revelation and cannot fully understand. That is a mystery. You only get to know mystery by revelation. And when the mystery of God is delivered to you, you look at yourself, I can't understand. Anytime you understand God, you are in heaven with him. I said something sometimes ago, I used to say it, that if God has given everyone what they needed, no one will pray again. 
Can I ask you this, this question? Everything you need, if God gives to you, will you pray again? How will you pray? To who? You need money? You have money? During church service, you'll be reading newspaper. Right? You'll be telling the one that is in charge of your old age, what have you made today, Alpha? You will not even be able to sleep because a lot of things will be coming to you through your manager. You begin to receive calls severally. But God so make it that I want them to depend on me every day. So I will not give them all. I will release it to them bit by bit. Can somebody say God is wonderful? For example, education is not a burden. Education is a door. Okay? A key to unlock the door of knowledge. When you look at education, it's not burdensome. But for people who don't have it from the beginning, they look at it that education is very hard. Right? Because of one thing, as you are growing up, your parents could not make you to get the right thing. How they do when you return from school, you go and sell a car in the afternoon or sell a giddy. In the morning before you go, you have something to say from your, with your head. When you return, the weekend you're supposed to say, they ask you, go and say, God one sign. Say, this is, this is uh, cold water. And you put it on your head. By the time people are going to school preparing for a better education, there is also a former education. And don't forget that education is not only go to higher institutions. Is to be aware of a certain things and to be knowledgeable about it. I have a friend who dropped out at form three. Form three should be, is it GS3 now or thereabouts? Form three in our days, that could be GS3. Okay. Then, he entered into business, the father gave him money. Every one of them that said, I don't want to go to school anymore. The father will give them money to give them money, eighty thousand naira. Then, and also give them one scrap vehicle. Because the father was into uh, selling of cars, and he said, "Repair the vehicle with this money, and make more money from the one you have repaired." That is always the answer. So all the children of that man are tokumba sellers. They are car dealers. All of them. It's only the women that are not car dealers. All of them. And here it is. When that my friend we met, and he said, this is what the father have done. I said, wow, it's okay. He said, I'm not interested. I want to go into mechanic and okay. Now, he wanted to go and learn mechanical work to be what? To be educated about that. So he can be knowledgeable. And many years after, I was in River State Port Harcourt, and it was still in our town. And I have to come home when I was planning to travel to Germany. Okay, he said, a particular woman prayed for him. And he wanted me to meet with that woman also. As soon as we got to that woman, I was to lean down. The woman said, don't lean down for me. I should lean down for you. I was afraid. And he, he said to me that there is only name written at your back. This man has been following you. And they wrote a Tairo. I said, and the woman said, this is the name I saw. Describe my father. As I then my father have gone to be with the Lord. And he said, the man said, what the work I have stopped on it, this is the one that will carry out the work. I could not see anything. I was so perplexed in my spirit. I was hungry. I said, what I want to do is to go to Germany and go into drugs. That was what I originally wanted to do. I was actually looking for a country that, you know, is happening so I can make money and settle my family and become a nigger. That was why my major work that I want to do. But the Lord changed it and took it from me. My friend who was taking me there was thinking I want to go for, to be selling cars, but he didn't know I have another mind. That is why you have to ask anyone standing beside you what is in your mind now. Are you see here? Everything was done by consular. 
Nigeria consular to Germany. <laughs> but God did not allow it to be possible. Each time I will see myself ministering to people, lay hands on people, conducting crusade. And again, one of my sisters, you know, say, one particular blind prophet has been asking of you. Say, oh, my, your father has come to me in the dream telling me certain things. And I say, I don't want that. I don't want. I finally went there because very close to the family. And the man called my name, a prophet, a blind man, without even knowing that I've entered. And he said, I see you abroad. You are, you, are, you are in the midst of, I said, this man, they see where. I thought he was actually seeing what I was about to do. I didn't know that he say he's seeing me preaching. I say, if this man blind, in brain blind, I was hungry. And for that reason, I was running for the work of God. But one day, my friend now called me and said, Leke, I want to go to Belgium. I said, okay. He took me to his account, you know, showed me, went to his bank together. We got to the account. And he said, you know, I can't speak very fluently. I want to hire a master holder. Somebody that I've read, that have master degree, I want to be paying salary to be my manager. <laughs> Is it possible? Is it possible? Why? Because he was well educated to what he was exposed to and also increase his capacity. And today, it's everywhere. When they have a little, little spiritual issue, will come in, all right? This is what is happening. And God will give him understanding. So this is the reason you must also be educated about the principle, about the mystery behind Holy Communion. Jesus would not have presented himself to us if that was not necessary. Imagine a person that says, I give you everything I have. I have nothing left. Say, this is my body. And it stands here today. If nobody understands the mystery of communion, I do. I know what it has done. If nobody knows it, I do. I know what communion has done in me, in the lives of people that God also asked me, tell this person to do it. But it seems it works for people. It, it works for some sets of people. It does not work for another set of people because of what? They lack the understanding of what communion, only communion stands for. There is always what is called the communion of Lucifer. That is oath. When people take oath in a cultic way, they are eating the communion of Lucifer. That's what they call it. One of my daughters in the Lord was actually speaking concerning somebody and said to that person and you know about this younger sister that was passing through a particular issue. And when the Lord opened my eyes, the Lord said, this lady had been given the communion of Lucifer. And this is the reason it will be very difficult for her to break out of this. Thank God, God has taken over that body. Hallelujah. How will you judge anyone who gave to you all his body? All. I have only one body and I'm giving you this body. I have blood in me and I'm giving you that blood. Can you just imagine the extent that Jesus has got into to offer you just pieces of bread and say, this is my body. To offer you wine and say, this is my blood. And he say, as regularly as you did this, you remember me. You remember me till I come. Don't forget that Holy Communion is a sacred practice that is mandated by Jesus in order for us to share from his body. In other words, unlocking the mystery of the Holy Communion is to bring out the hidden truth behind the power of the Holy Communion. Hidden truth about it. Do you know that if you are pure in heart, you can serve communion in your house. If you appear in heart, you can serve communion in your office. If you appear in heart, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Say, you do it. Then we come together as one body to do this to God. I pray today in the name of Jesus, the Lord Almighty will unfold to you what you need to know. Can I hear a better amen? amen. Holy communion is not a regular food, but a spiritual meal. So Jesus said, after the supper, then communion was served. 
So the Bible call it the Lord's Supper. There are 10 things to know about the mystery of the Holy Communion. Number one, we partake of the Lord's Supper as embodied being. We partake of the Lord's Supper as what? As embodied being. The communion mean involve us in and embrace us in God's grace. We are not mere observer, we do something. We are not mere observer, we hit something. We are not here observer, we, we see something. We become part of the lost project and become participants in the story that Jesus has taught us. We share from the life of Christ. We are consecrated into a new covenant. We engage in a sacred practice with our Father. Our soul are fed by the flesh and the blood of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 11. I'll be reading from verses 24 to 26. It says, when he had given thanks. One of the things you need to do when communion is being served, you must make sure you give thanks regularly. He broke it and said, take it. This is my body. When he has given thanks, he broke it and said, take it. This is my body. Now, you need to understand something here. You need to know when he said that this is my body, that means there have been communication between his person and also this substance. Release his person into what is given to you to eat. Say, Lord, I turn this to my body. I turn this to my flesh. I turn this to my blood. He didn't cut itself and bring out blood to it. But because he is all represent God and all represent man, he knows what he has seen. Just for instance, when I'm praying for some people, when I ask them to bring oil, I've condemned a lot of oil in the hands of people because I didn't see that thing that God used to show me. I remember a particular person, I said, I want to pray for you for a certain thing. And the person brought four oil and we are rejected. I said, go and throw it away. Brought another one, go and throw it away. Brought another one, go and throw it away. Brought another one, go and throw it away. And the person was not tired of buying. <laughs> you know, there are some people, they will get to a level and say, ah, I'm tired now, inside of their mind. You may not say it, but your mind says it. Immediately your mind says it, you are condemned. And to the glory of God, the five was received by the Spirit of God. And I bless the fifth one. And after everything, he asked me, sir, why do you ask me to throw this one away? I say, what God used to show me when I pray on inside the water on oil, I didn't see it. It means it can work. But some people will just hand it over to you. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. And that is all. You will use it. It will never work. Are you see here? And what we are believing God for as at that time was a critical issue. It was somebody with HIV case. And as I said, just put it in your mouth, just little, and go and sleep. If you like, you can use the remaining one. What was needed was just small quantity, not the old oil. But four oil, four containers of oil were wasted. <laughs> and to the glory of God, the Lord touched that life. I said, I will never play with divine instruction anymore. Amen. Some years back, they pray inside a particular hall from my father's church. And my mom asked my younger brother, I was in the east then, to bring it for me. I received it with thanksgiving. I was happy. And I slept. I discovered that all the substance, the bottle of oil, they are white. And I asked my brother, the second day, I said, go and throw it away. And he asked me, they pray on this for 21 days. I said, there is no power there. Maybe when you are bringing in something happen. And my God said to me that he crossed a particular river and the oil was polluted. And I, I, I prayed. Then I wasn't a pastor, but I hear God once in a while. 
and I have to pray. And I, I saw him, the river. What happened in this also place where you are coming? God showed me. And he said, it's true. I said, that was where the oil was polluted. So we need to understand. So you must understand the mystery behind the communion you are taking. Whenever you hit holy communion, you are actually communicating with God. You are telling yourself, I am part of you. You are telling yourself, I have not left you to myself. You are telling God and tell God, say, God, I know everything you want me to know. I am happy. That is why you have to first give thanks. Say, this is my body that is broken for you. This too in remembrance of me. Verse 25. After the same man also he took up when he absorbed saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. New testament. is a new testament in my blood. 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 It's like a personal property in my blood. A new testament. So he said, this do ye as of as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Verse 26. For as oft, often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. In other words, you are actually connecting to God. You need to know and understand certain things. A time may be in like that, they are telling you that things don't work in a place. All you need to do, take the meal, Take the bread, take the wine, eat, and project. When you are going for any interview, you have right. When you get to that place, you have already prepared yourself with Holy Communion. I carry the body of Christ in me. I have drank the blood of Jesus with me. Oh, listen to this. When you get there, any question they ask will be the pastor, even if you don't get it. Hope you understand what I'm saying. Even if you don't get it. I remember I went to my father in the Lord office of late. And as we finished talking, just went to his wardrobe. He gave me a suit. He said, wait, will he size you? I said, daddy, before you bring it, it's already sizing me. And he brought shirt, he brought tie, he brought trousers. He said, is he your? I said, it's my size. I've told you, I wear it. I wear it till I left to get to my house. I didn't wear suit out of the house. I say, grace, come. So, the same way, you need to understand the purpose of God. And that is the suit, the complete I'm wearing now. You know, size me. It fits me in pieces. Hallelujah. So, this is also, when God said, this is my body. I said, God, for the fact the body of this my papa have entered into this cloth, this must work, this must work, this must work. I begin to pray. So when you are taking communion, you have to take it intentionally with the change of certain things. And you look at yourself, they, I can never remain the same. My life can never remain the same. Things must change in my favor. Things must change in a divine order. Number two, the Lord's Supper reminds us that we depend on God for sustenance. It reminds us that we depend on what? On God for sustenance. Every meal, not just communion, but including communion, is a reminder that we are dependent on God's creation. Whenever you eat food, you depend on God's provision. Give all these days our daily bread and forgive all our trespasses. As we forgive those who, what, who trespass against us. How many trespassers have you forgiven? It's a question. Can somebody say in your heart, how many trespassers have you forgiven? People who trespass against you, how many of them have you forgiven? And when you are taking communion, Say, so you must not take this if you are not fit to take. There are some people who are not fit to take communion. The word of the Lord says that the eyes of the Lord cannot be on iniquity. Here it is. When you carry the image of God, 
you pray in the order of God and you see how something against people on your inside, there is going to be a problem. Ask my children and people that know me, when I have something against you, I quickly settle in my mind so I can discuss with God the next second. But if it's something that is bigger, I've already said too, you cannot be on assignment or punishment. That will be there, but I will never hold you in my heart. That's why in the seconds, when, you, when I have ought against you, I will rebuke you, and in the seconds, I've already called you for you to know that I won't have anything against you. But, this is what the principle says. You must pass through so you can learn. Are you seeing here? Why? Because I want to partake from the body of Christ. I want to be the beneficiary of the blessing that accompany communion. Imagine a couple that be together for months <laughs> who don't talk. They are in the same house and they don't talk. Do we discover that God can never present in the house? I talk to every family now. Go and start communion in your house. Go and do what? Start serving communion with your children. Go and do that. It is not out of order. It is not something that a pastor must only do for you. When we come to the table together, we come to the unity of purpose at the table of Christ uh, to also be unified together. We do it in the heart. So don't forget that the Bible says that you are the temple of the Lord. So you are a personality, a temple going to the place of worship. The first temple is you. Do you hear me very well? The first temple is you. So when you look at yourself, so I'm the house of God. I have the altar of God on my inside. Oh, I have the spirit of God on my inside. So I cannot take to my body what God is rejecting. A lot of people didn't understand this. When the word of the Lord said that you are the temple of the living God, can you come to the altar of God and sit on the altar and comfortably drinking alcoholic or smoking cigarette or smoking goof? So say, I'm the temple of God. Oh, no way. I cannot go out of order. I must be what temple represents. Many years ago, a particular man was afflicted with a spirit of drunkenness. And I told him, I said, he should buy the brand of the drink. As a matter of fact, it's not even a big man drunkenness. Shekwe. How many of us know Shekwe? Okay, so... He was in the category of shepherd. And I told him one day, I said, bring this shepherd to the church. He said, sir, I can't bring it to the church. I said, you must bring it. And he brought it to the church. I said, let's go to the front of the altar. We got to the front of the altar. I said, oh, yeah, drink. He said, daddy, I cannot drink. If you want to kill me, kill me. I said, uh -huh. I said, you must drink. He said, if you want to kill me, sir, kill me. I don't know why I'm drinking this. I said, oh, yeah, spit inside of it. And now spat. I said, drink again. I said, the big spit came from your body. Do you hate your spit? He said, no. I said, okay, go and pour it outside. If you cannot drink in the church, inside the church, then don't do it outside. Why? Because your body is a temple of the living God. That is your body. I said to people that to sin when we are in the world, to sin when we are in the world is very sweet. To sweet, to sin when we are in the world, oh my God. To live unholy when we are in the world, oh my God. Very sweet. You want to do what you love to do. You want to carry so many girls, you want to do certain things, you want to move, you want to go to club. If I go to a club, I don't send church. Those days, I will make sure that I visit at least four clubs per night. From Boots Legas to Charlie's Club, from Charlie's Club to different clubs like that, I must visit and I must make sure I drink and return back home with a prostitute. 
And when some people see me now and say, Pastor, I've done this before. Yes, I don't do them. But when God came into my life, I look at all those old things and I say to myself, this is not of God anymore. And I dump it. You can also do that. Then God can, re can receive you back. So when you take communion, you are telling God that you are the only one that can sustain me. How many of us can say I can take care of my head by myself? It's not possible. So we are not self-sustaining. Most of our food grow through somebody cook it or we take it. But communion is given to us by God. We also prepare and present it to God and say, God, take this. And we take it. I have turned into his blood. Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Number 3. The Lord's Supper can be a model for our everyday supper. A model. If you like, you can just go to a level and say, I want to eat the Lord's Supper today. I want to take the Lord's Supper today. And listen to this. The Bible says that you that you are hungry. When you come to church, if you are hungry from your house, make sure you eat. <laughs> eat from your house before you come. So when you eat from your house, you are not coming to church and say, I never be a fool. Because what is going to give to you cannot do you anything. That's why communion is always small. Holy communion is always small. We have already cut it into two. And when you take it, you believe that this will bring healing to me. This will bring beauty to me. This one will take away rejection from me. This one will take away hunger from me. This one will take away procrastination from me. This one will take away the life that is not of God from me. This one will take away this from me. This one will add color to my life. This one will have beauty to my beauty. This one will have got many things to me. And you look at yourself and say, this little thing, something that I'm taking, it is out of ordinary. It is supernatural. So that is the reason. To unlock the mystery of the holy communion, you must know what it is. And this is the reason. Your body must always be pure. Always be pure. Because anytime you see yourself, I want to be part of this. We can learn and practice around the communion table. It's meant to spill out the rest of our life. The grace we receive at communion is meant to shape the way we relate with other people. Number four, Christ is present. In the Lord's Supper, through the Spirit. Holy communion is not just bread and wine. It's the presence of God. That is why I told the minister, before you do anything at communion table, wash your hand clean. Let your heart be clean. Make sure that you are not having grudges. Because you, that you also serve it, you can also be uh, a problem to the people that will receive it. Jesus said, I have received from the Lord that which I deliver unto you. Why did he say? I receive what of the Lord. He said, was it the Lord, the, the normal bread, was it the Lord that prepared the bread? No. He has taken it to a particular realm of power, realm of mystery, sir. I have received from the Lord that which that I deliver to you. That which I gave to you. And the apostles say, have received from the Lord. That Jesus, that night in which he was betrayed, took bread. They always reminding us that that night he took bread. That night he took wine. That night he also served his people. I've received of the Lord. So when you take it, your eyes shall be open. So we can think about Christ's presence at all time number five. The Lord's Supper is a way of communion with Christ. A way of what? Of coming with Christ. So when we are weary, when we are doubting, when we are fearful, when we are guilty, when we are frustrated, when we are proud, when we are anxious, when we come to the communion table, we receive them as a sign of union to take away all these things that I've mentioned. Take away frustration. 
Take away worries. Take away certain things. You take it again. You take it over and over. Are you listening to me? They said to you that you have a snake bite in the dream. And you wake up and say, God, I had a snake bite in the dream. I'm taking your blood. I'm taking your flesh. I want to tell you what that represents will disappear. There is no power that can face the power of God. They said there is snake bite. And instead of you to begin to fidget, you dream and you hear somebody fed you in the dream. Take communion on the second day. Let your blood neutralize this bad dream, sir. Are you listening to me? And you say, finally, finally, as I'm sleeping, I want to take your body. From today, I'm no longer living under fear. Bad dream disappear. Because you don't know how to understand, how to unlock the mystery of it. And the devil will come and will start tormenting you because of what you did not know. But when you know, the Bible said that you shall know the truth and the truth will do what? We set to free. Number six, the Lord's Supper is a reminder. Communion is a regular reminder of all God has done for us. Communion, only communion is more than memoria. In the book of Matthew, uh, Mark account of the Last Supper. Nevertheless, communion is certainly not less than a memorial. Jesus said that you must do this in remembrance of him. Do this. So, to unlock the mysteries, you must know what it stands for. What do you want to know about that mystery? How do you want to communicate with the power of God through the mystery? How do you want to go ahead of that mystery? You have to know through communion number seven, the Lord's Supper offers assurance of pardon. It offers what? Assurance of what? Of pardon. Anytime you go out of the will of God, when you come to the table to sup with God, you come with humility. The Bible says, let us therefore come body under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. The Bible says, if my people are called by my name, can humble themselves and seek my face and pray, how we hear from heaven, how we heal their land. Are you hearing me? The word of the Lord said, uh, when you call upon me and you forsake your sin, uh, I will come to you. He said, I'm at the door knocking. Anytime you open the door for me, I will come in, I will do what? I will sup with are you see here? Your business is not working. And you are putting the blame on somebody in your environment. Hello? When you carry the spirit of God, everyone knows what they eat before they go out. Some people don't do, when they are coming out, they put something that they have given to them in animals on, in goats on, put it in their mouth, pray, pray, pray. they command the out of every of their customer to come and buy something from them. And you have your shop beside that person. You have your office beside that person. You are caught tenant somewhere. And you don't have what to say. Hello. When you hit the, the blood. Or you, you drink the blood. And you hit the flesh. You can also command. The word of the Lord say. Thou shall decree a thing. And it shall be established unto you. You don't just decree. There must be something on your inside before declaration. For the fact that it is not working for other people. Does not mean that it is not going to work for you. You hear me? For the four people are not getting it right, does not mean that you will not get it right. That's why the Lord said, unlock the mystery. Let them know, tear is open to the world. Let everyone understand the power. Some pastor didn't even know the secret behind communion. Because of what? They have not been tutored before they run out of weird way. And go and open church. There are many everywhere. And before you know it, they go to Mr. Peter, ah, the Lord is saying you must have vision in your house today. A rebellious servant serve from having vision in the house of members without contacting the senior pastor. The Lord is saying that you must give me money, you must owe to a servant. <laughs> I watch a comedy. That I forgot the name of that guy. When the time is coming, he says, legit. Anything I tell you is legit. And he went to Yinka Yifele and said to Yinka Yifele, don't laugh. I see you running for Nigeria. I say you should not laugh. Why are you laughing? <laughs> and I say, do you can even let say yes? All right, Mr. Reese. And he said, yes, I can see it in my spirit. As soon as he finished, he said, but I see that there is a demon that wants to stop you not to run that race. He 
said, no, ah, I must get that medal. And by the time he was rounding up, Nika Evela said, look at me very well. Do you know me? He said, I'm thinking. He said, I'm Nika Evela. How can I run? He said, never in your life. Don't come and lie again. So, there are people like that. They are professional beggars. They are sent through food, but not sent by God. They were sent through their tummy. And they prophesy. And it's, my God. I pray today. If you are falling into the hands, will you not fall into the hands again? Remember yeah. it? The Lord's Supper invites God to keep his covenant and his promises. When we celebrate communion in remembrance of Jesus, we are not simply recalling the past. We are calling on God to act in keeping with his covenant and his promises. We are also asking him for forgiveness of sin. Okay, we are also asking him to keep us and to clean us with his blood. Number nine, the Lord's Supper shapes our character. As Christian, that is number nine. There is a character, measure of character that is needed from you. You have to check yourself. How can I live my life today? How can I walk with God today? How we people know? I said to the worker in the morning, I said, if you go about begging people for daily bread, I said, oh, you have limited your God. Do you hear me? The word of the Lord says that we should pray this way. Give us our daily bread. Give it to us. Not say, begging people before you eat. Whenever you turn yourself to the object of pity, anytime you are going to the house, they will lock the door. And they will tell the children, tell this person that I'm not at home. Why? Because you beg so much, you have turned to a ridicule. May your case not turn to that. A better amen. Amen. So, the question is, how will I, what are the material for Holy Communion? I told you the first one we did was with agege bread. Right? I bought it from people that are selling agege bread. And I blessed it and I told it to the flesh of Jesus. But there was no wine. As a matter of fact, maybe there was no money to buy wine that time. No, God did not tell me to do wine. He said, only bread. I had a testimony of a pastor who said, during COVID, he was attacked with COVID. And the doctor said, I don't have any other chance. <laughs> you will go for this. And a program was going on in the church. And this pastor have to say, okay, connect to this. Say, I do not have anything. I only have water. And he said, I drank the water and inside of my mouth, it was like wine. And that was the end. A ministry personnel walked in. As the ministry personnel walked in with some entourage, he removed what doctor has fixed and fixed his own. Because of what? After that communion. So he compared God to heart in his capacity as God. I pray for you today, the Lord will compare God in you in the name of Jesus. So communion, okay, is to shape our character. The way you live, you look at yourself. I want to change from the way I used to live. I want to start living the way I ought to live. All the Baba things I used to do, I do them no more. All the Baba things I used to do, I do them no more. All the Baba things I used to do, I do them no more. That is a great change since I met God. Hallelujah. So you can also take it, but your mind must be ready. And your life must be in Christ. The mouth of communion must not be the mouth you'll be using to curse at all times. Surely you are Are you mad? You are very stupid. Why must you talk to me like that? When you take communion, it's to reshape you. To take away hunger. To trim your mindset. To take away your hunger. To take away your gluten spirit. There are some people, they eat every time they eat. Everything they see, they eat. That's why the Lord said that this breakfast service, we must not eat until we take communion. Number 10, the Lord's Supper looks ahead. 
philosopher also point forward to the final eternal banquet promised by Isaiah Luke account and of the last supper that is booked for us okay at the time that Jesus returned Luke chapter 22 verse 14 18 28 and 30 Jesus said I will not eat until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God Luke 22 verse 16 also said that Jesus is eagerly desire that we must eat the last supper together so we must eat together don't you want to be the part of that kingdom? Don't you want to be the part of that kingdom? Don't you want to be the part of that kingdom? Come on. Come on, everybody. Come sing with me. Righteousness. Peace. Oh, joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Hey, hey, hey. Righteousness, peace, oh, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Hey, don't you want to be the part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be the part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be the part of the kingdom? Come on, come on, everybody. Hey, there is peace in the kingdom. So much that is peace in the kingdom. Hey, that is peace in the kingdom. Come on, come on, everybody. Hey, that is joy in the kingdom. Hey, that is joy. Come on, everybody. Don't you want to be the part of the everybody? Don't you want to be the God of the kingdom? Don't you want to be the part of that? Come on. Come on, everybody. The Lord didn't tell us that you must buy a loaf of bread and turn it to communion and begin to eat it on your belly food. So your mind will go out of the original purpose. You can convert all, please sit down. You can convert all the bread and all the wine to communion, but not the purpose I want to eat and belly food. <laughs> Do you hear me very well? So you don't lose focus. But some people bring Eba and say, Lord, I turn this Eba to communion. You can do that. Bread was used as a token. It's a token. But Jesus said, this is this. First Corinthians eleven thirty four says, NLT, if you are really hungry, eat at home. So you won't bring judgment upon yourself when you meet together. What does that mean? When you are coming, you know some people, when they serve some set of people, food, when they serve them food, the eyes of another person will be there. Even no matter the adults they are. Ah, the meat on this one is too much. Oh. It's too much. Why are they not giving? Begin to see their eyes. They will count the meat that is in the plate of other people. Amen. So please, it's very important. It's very important we must know what they stand for. Amen. So the benefits of communion, let me just give you two. It makes you share the body of Christ. It brings healing to you. Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 says, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the word of God. So you need to understand that only communion might not work for you if you refuse to love the Lord. If you refuse, no wonder some people receive it and it does not work for them. Preventure their heart is still out of God's agenda. Here it is when you are a person that depends on facts not on faith. You will question everything about God. In this kingdom, we don't act on fact. We act on faith. Those things you see are, where? are temporal. Those things you didn't see, they are internal. So in this kingdom, we don't base on fact. We base on faith. Faith 
can work it for you. You will begin to dig into fact until you go on this planet. Please let me be upstanding. For adventure, you are here. You are working with God. It's not smooth. I have been asking yourself, I want to give my totality to him. I want to change in my reasoning. I want to change in my understanding. I want to give to God. We are about to serve communion for breakfast communion. The second one for this month. You want to say, Lord, please, I need you in my life. I need you in my life. Who is that person that will come to the heel of the Lord? He that have what? A clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his heart unto vanity. Nor swine deceitfully. Provincial, you are here. Nobody is calling your name.